Let your name be lifted high, Jesus. Let your name be honored, God. And we commit all that we are to you, God, and everything that we do. And we reach towards you, Jesus.
good afternoon, everyone. Is my mic on? Everything is okay? Could I ask you to stand at this time as we prepare for the homegoing service of Sean Darrymple? And could I ask the attendant at this time to close the coffin at this time? Let me just introduce myself. My name is Pastor Wayne Batiste, and I'll be your official this evening as we celebrate the life of Sean. I know it's a difficult time, 56 years, 56, 57 years. We give God thanks. I've buried those who are just 18 months. So we give God thanks. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go for prayer. Father and God, we thank you today. We thank you for the life of Sean Darempo. And Lord, although we meet a difficult time and difficult situation and a difficult occasion, I pray that you would strengthen all members of his family. Pray that you would give them grace to undertake this time of pain and difficulty during this morning period. That you would strengthen them to make it through. Lord, even as we are about to say goodbye to him or his body the remains thank you for his life thank you for the times of his joy and, and the good times and the bad times that we would have celebrated with Sean bless all the families that remain to mourn his past him give us strength to go through this service in Jesus name we pray everyone say and welcome to those of you that are looking, to, looking at us online. We want to start by singing, and I know it's a difficult time to sing, but let's be grateful for life. Very, very powerful song of the church. Help me sing. The last time I did a funeral here, I got plenty of people to sing. I hope I can do the same to have you sing this. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of a glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, and this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of a rapture now burst on my side. Angels descended, bring from above echoes of a mercy, whispers of a love. Help me sing. This is my story. This 
is my song, who reason of my Savior, all the day long, this is my story, this is my song, reason my Savior, all the day long. Final verse, perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, I'm a happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness. Lost in his love. Oh, this is my story. This is my song. I'm a prison of my Savior all the day long. This is my story. Yeah, this is my song. Oh, raising my Savior all the day. Just one more time, yeah. This is my story. Yeah. This is my song. Oh, raising my Savior. All the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Raising my Savior. All the day. There's another song that we sing, recognizing the greatness of God. Help me sing the song, How Great Thou Art. Hallelujah. <coughs> oh, Lord, my God. When I'm in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars. And I hear the roaring thunder, thy part throughout the universe display. Help me sing the song, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great, how great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great. Thou art, how great thou art, and when I think 
that God, his Son, not Spirit, sent him to die as cares can take it in. That on the cross, that on the cross, my good and gladly buried, he bled and I died to teach away my sins. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, verse 3, when Christ shall come. With shouts of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in a humble and then proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. Oh, how great. Thou art, oh, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. Oh, how great thou art. How great thou art One more time Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou Let's keep remain standing for our scripture reading. Taken from the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And it reads, To everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the sun. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. 
a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. You may have your seats. At this time, Roy Darimple is coming to do the eulogy. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I didn't write anything, um, any words to say, but I have it in my mind. Um, well, we all know Sean Dalrymple, and from what I remember, um, a man of many words, but I could break it down a little bit. Integrity knowledge of understanding of what he about and what he for. Um, he was also a caring person. Um, I saw it with my own two eyes. Over the years, um, he employed a lot. Uh, he helped out a lot of people, and including myself. Not because I was an easy son, so, um, just to say, um, also, God bless his soul that he passed. Um, and at first, I couldn't uh, deal with the situation that he had passed, but I come into terms of it. Um, also, to his family, um, he had a lot, a lot of love for everybody. Despite all the ways he had, he was a very loving person. He might not have show it at point in time, but I saw it for myself. Um, because I was close to him, and those who don't know him to that extent, I could say. Um, I also want to say again, God bless his soul, and may it live on. Uh, I was actually thinking today that um, even though he passed at 55, I was saying that uh, he could get at least 50 more um, due to sound. So, but God knows what best for everyone because it was already written. So um, uh, today I just want to say also that. Um, May you rest in peace, and may the love still live on. Thank you very much, Roy. <laughs> While it is not on the program, I would like to just give a five minutes. Is there anybody who would like to pay tribute to Roy. I just want to give, I know it's not on the program, but as I say, you don't get a chance to rehearse a funeral. So everything that you have to say, you have to say today. So I want to give anybody in the audience, if not, we just, as I said, it's not on the program, but after listening to Roy, I just thought if anybody wanted to say something. All right, let's. Amazing grace, how sweet the song. It's right in your songbook there. Amazing grace. You will remain seated until we reach the last verse when it says, when, when we've been there 10,000 years, then we all stand. Is that okay? So you remain seated for verse 1, 2, and 3. And then when we reach the final verse, we stand. Okay? <coughs> 
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. It was great. That torn my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve. How precious did that grace. Up the eye, I first believe to men need just toys and snares. I have. All ready come. His grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. Can we all stand to sing the final verse? When we been dead ten thousand years, bright shining as the We continue to be surrounded by death in the middle of what many believe to be a man-induced pandemic. It is my humble opinion that despite our more or more often or regular interaction with death, it has been my observation as a pastor that still far too many 
are sadly and tragically unprepared for death. I was remarking to my wife this morning that this is probably my 31st funeral for the year 2021. Just about three weeks ago, I had to bury one of my niece. Very difficult funeral, a funeral that I wished I didn't have to do. But duty fell upon me to do that. And I'm here at Sean's home going. And I want to say to you that funerals are not for the dead. As I, every time I preach a funeral, I, I cannot do it like the last one. It's not a profession. It's not like you could come and just put on an act. If somebody lost a loved one. Somebody lost a father. Somebody lost a good friend, a homie. Somebody lost their life mate. So it's not like I can come here and just put on an act. I think if I do that, that would be a, a travesty to a family. And I'm from a big family. So because many are ill-prepared for death or unprepared for death, I have made it my business as a pastor to tailor-made or tailor-make my messages so that those who, who attend a funeral don't leave without understanding that one of these days we too would be in a casket like this. There's somebody talking. We too would be at a casket. And we too would be sung over. And we too would have nice, pleasant trees set about us. And I want, as I came here, I said, what do I say to these people? And I want to tell you about three words Three words, W-O-R-L-D-S, with my sub-theme, Are You Prepared? The book of Peter, Second Peter, when he wrote his second epistle, he focused his attention on the hereafter. And he wrote this, he said, the second epistle, Beloved, I write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which are spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing this, that there shall come in the last days people walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant that the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, the earth and all the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, 
What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat? Nevertheless, and I love that word, that's my favorite word today. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Civiliz civilization as we know it is divided into three worlds. And we saw it in the book of Peter here. The first world is the past world, the world that was. Here what verse 6 says, whereby the world that was being overflowed with water perished. So that's the world that was. Then the second is the present world, the world that you and I now occupy. Verse 7 says, but the heavens, they are different, there are three heavens. There is the earth, there is one earth, which are now, by the same word, the same word of God, are kept, stored, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition or destruction of ungodly men. So that's the world now. The world that we live in, it's here. But it has been reserved. Then the third civilization is the prospective world, which is the world to come. Verse 13 said, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. With the time that I have, I just want to give you an overview of the three words, but I want to underpin it with this fact that I hope none of you that are listening to me via stream and those of you sitting in the funeral home today would ever forget. I want to say something that I want you to never forget. It has been my experience that people come to funeral, cry, and go and do the same thing. I, something, something. That troubles me. They say that insanity is the ability to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. And I am no medical doctor, but if I am to judge by the 30 funerals that I have done so far for the year, people come, they cry, and they go back and do the same thing. I've been a Christian for many years, and I could tell you something. I fear God. I don't believe I'm safe. I believe as I study the scripture more carefully that I am waiting when Christ comes, when I would have finished my tour here for God to judge me. I don't live for so much the, the, the accolades and the praise of people. I, I know I have to do my part as a, as a human being. But there's a consciousness in my mind that, listen, God is watching at me. The book of Proverbs says, the Lord ponders the part of every man. That is a frightening thing. You mean God is watching you when you feel that hey, you're on your own? No. The Bible said the eyes of the Lord run it to and fro in the whole earth. And I will tell you how that is possible. I remember, I remember taking up my phone the other day. And my phone tell me all the places I travel. I said, Lord, Lord. I, I, I went joking to my wife. I said, sweetheart, if I was being unfaithful to you, catch me, girl. The phone dropped everywhere that I went for that whole month. If man could, do, could create a device like that, then it tells me when the prophet says, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro in the whole earth and he's beholding the good and the evil. I believe that. Amen. But I want to tell you this truth that I hope if you hear nothing what I say today, you remember this. That man, and I want to read it 
carefully. You must never overlook this fact that man is born eternal as his maker. Let me tell you this. Another preacher may not tell you this. You were born eternal. What do I mean? You were born to live on, not to die. Because of sin, which is every unrighteousness, every form of unrighteousness. Sin brings death, according to the book of Romans. If Jesus did not take on sin, he may not have died. He, he would not have died. Sin brings death. Man is, it is an eternal being. Why? Because the God who made him is eternal. Let me show you from the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 says, He, almighty God, had made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. In scripture, your heart is, is, is interchanged with your soul. Not that organ that pumps the blood to all parts of your body, but that inner being, that inner being, that, that inner man that people don't see, the real you. God has put eternity into the hearts of men. Hear what the book of Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says. And at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince, which standeth up for thy children and of thy people. There shall be a time of trouble, such as was since there was a nation, even to the, that time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Everyone shall be found within the book. And here's the verse. And many of them shall sleep in the dust and shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to everlasting come. Content. Let me read that again. And many of them shall sleep. Many they are going to die. He put that as a sleep. Daniel 12 verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Mr. Darempel is going to awake. Somewhere. I don't know where he's going to awake. That's not my business. But he is going to awake. I hope not today. Otherwise we have to be looking for space to get out of here. Right? Some to everlasting shame and some to everlasting content. Let me run quickly. Revelation chapter 20 verse 11. Hear this. John looking at a vision. He said, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were opened and another book were opened which is the book of life. And the dead... The dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And the death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. We were born. Did, have you ever heard that statement, when you're dead, you're done? That is not incorrect. It is just incomplete. You see that? It is not incorrect. It is incomplete. When you're dead, you're done. you done. You don't lie. You don't steal. You don't fornicate. You don't horn. You don't run woman. You don't run man. You don't thief. you done. That is it for you. you done. But God had done with you yet. You had to give an account. Let me show you how I know people are stupid. I'll tell you how I know people are stupid. None of us work here on this planet and do expect to get paid. You crazy. I'm going to work for you, make money and money, then come and you want to give me my money. I'm going to look for a puya and come back. <laughs> well, these days are looking for God, right? How the Bible said God created man, and he put man on this earth. And you feel you could just go through here and do a given account. Come on, that doesn't, it doesn't make sense. If you are a thinking person, you would have realized that, you know why, you know why, 
My life has value here. My, I, have, I have, a, have a purpose here. When God made man, every product that is made, they make a manual fit. When God made man, he made a manual. It's called the Bible. And he tells you what he expects of you. Just like your car. You make a car, they give you a manual. And you may want to put um, juice in the engine if you want. But it ain't going to work. You could, you could see me go take on the manufacturer, I go put juice. It ain't going to work. The engine goes seize. Engine would lubricate with oil. Let me show you another verse. Revelation, um, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27 says, And God said, Let us make man in our what? Image and after our likeness. You and I are created in the image and likeness of God. Because we are in this realm, we are not able to exercise certain powers that God has. But one of the things that we are like him is we are going to live on and on. After you and I would have completed our tour of duty on earth, which death would end, would end sorry, we would never come back through this life again. Let me tell you this. Reincarnation is not true. We are not going to come back through this life again. You're going to be 16 once. You're going to be 20 once. You're only going to be 21 once. You're only going to be three once. Only once. You're not coming back. There's no coming back. And because you will never cease, because God, sorry, will never cease to be, you and I will never cease to be. People want you to hear me, no? You and I are going to go on living somewhere in eternity, either in heaven or in hell. And we are going to be living on and on and on, timeless, ageless, measureless, on and on in two locations. Say, Pastor, we mean, we mean believe that. Let me tell you something. Fire burns whether you believe it or not. Poison kills whether you believe it or not. My wife says this all the time. She says, you are the best looking preacher in Trinidad. And you, whether you believe that or not, she believes that. Some things are true whether you believe it or not. Your, what you believe has nothing to do on the fact that what goes up comes down. That if you push your hand in a socket and it's have live wire, I'm, I'm current is going through, you're going to get shocked. You could, you could say, I don't believe it. I don't believe that. And go and, go and push your hand up. The password. Let me give you quickly the password. The password. The password. So there are three words. The password. The password, the world that was, was firstly it was a created world. The book of Peter. Let me go back to the book of Peter. All right. It says here. First Peter. I just want to take it here from my notes here. Knowing first that they shall come in the last days, coffers walking after their owners, saying, Where is the promise of him? For since the fathers fell, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. No longer hear Jesus Christ coming. Eh? For this they willingly are ignorant that the word of God, that by, by the word of God, the heavens which were old, and the earth standing out of the water, and in the water. What does that mean? It means that God created the heavens and the earth. There was no Big Bang theory. The world didn't come with a Big Bang, but it's going out with a Big Bang. The Bible said the earth shall melt with a fervent heat. There's going to be a great noise. You know what verse 10 says? The heavens and earth shall pass away with a great noise. A great noise. It didn't come with a Big Bang, but it's going out with a Big Bang. So they was created. Look at the book of Genesis. Says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created the heavens and the earth. You know, I know, you know I, how I know uh, uh, um, 
uh, evolution is wrong, that man didn't come from monkey, you're you look at me, oh gosh. Like monkey pieces. Come on. If you believe that, then you have room upstairs for rent and the light's not on. God created man. God created man. I function like God. I behave like God. Do you know why you're like nobody telling you nothing? Because you're just like God. You ever realize that I was talking to my wife the other day. I said, Why? We married for 33 years and still yet when she gave me her order, I still have to, I still have to. You know, kind of cool myself down to receive it. I, we don't like nobody telling me nothing. So that's why when my children give in trouble, I understand, I understand. That is why when they are in early, you have to stimulate the gluteus maximus so that the cerebral cortex falls in line. That's right, amen. All them people who say no be children, no be children. Anyhow, let me see if we can get Sean Berry today, otherwise we're enjoying all yourself too much. But seriously, seriously though, the world was created. God created the heaven. The Bible said not only was that world the first world created, but it was also, it was also corrupted. The Bible said in the book of Genesis chapter 6, man began to do some crazy things. And if I had time, I would have tell you why I am not taking the vaccine. But I know that will cause Sean to want to stand up and find out too. There are certain things happening. There are certain things happening in the world that was happening then. There was a, there was a changing of the genome. The sons of God came down and they saw the daughters of men and they went in and they began to mix the seed. And this is why God destroyed the world. I don't want to get into that. And one of these things these vaccines want to do is to interfere with the, 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 the image of God and man. I am not a conspiracy theorist. I went all the way to you. I went all the way. And I could debate Dr. Rowley and them anytime, anytime, anyway. Bring them. I could debate them. But we ain't come to talk about that. We want to get caught your belly. Listen. The world became corrupted. Men began to men are doing all kind of things. Men with men, women with women, men with dog. I'm one marriage dog here today. Are we, are we, are we getting better? With all the monies and all the universities, are we getting better? So the world was, that world was corrupted, came corrupted. The Bible said, the Bible said that it repented God that he made man. And he said, Manoah, listen, I'm going to destroy the world. And the same thing, and here we hear what Peter said. He said, he said, the world then, not only was it created, not only was it corrupted, but you know what happened? It was condemned, God condemned the world. And then he looked back, he said, see this present world, this present world now? Doing the same thing. The first world was overflowed by water. He said, but this time, he put a rainbow in the sky. And the rainbow in the sky is not for man to, to, to be with a man and a woman to be with a woman. That is not what the rainbow means. You know? It's have a group of people taking the rainbow and doing things. But God would judge every single one of them. But I ain't talking about that today. There's fire coming. This, look what Peter said. And this is what the Bible said. I'm not making up anything. He said, but this world, this world, the world that is known is reserved. Do you know what is the reserve? To put. Do you know that fire cures certain things when, you, when you're doing certain things? They use fire to keep it in place. Fire is keeping this earth together. And that's why the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, God is a consuming fire. God is a consuming fire. So let me see if I can bring this thought up close. So you have this present world. And I will tell you something. I'll tell you something. This present world is going to pass. Just like the former world. Right? Let me give you this and done. 
This world that we never know is headed for condemnation. Listen to this. There are 735 predictions in the whole of the Bible. Predictions. There are more prophecies, but there are predictions. Of this 735, 596 have already been fulfilled point accuracy. If you are a betting man, if you have seen 80% of the predictions that the Bible predicted come to pass, wouldn't you think that the other 139 would come to pass? So this is why I tell people, I say, Brothers, you, you, I remember the, my partners and them laugh at me when I give my heart to Jesus and I came from the block. You know what I'm saying? And they tell me, two weeks time, I'll be back. Eh, 40 years now and I'm still preaching. You know what I'm saying? And these days, I feel so good. I could, because I see anything coming to pass, no matter, and I day watching people, man. That is the best day to be a Christian. I'm not talking about the Christophines. There are those. Anytime you see Anytime you see original, you will get copy. So I know there's a lot of copy out there, but that is not my business to see who is copy and who is not copy. But I'll tell you something. The odds are the, the next 139 prediction will happen. You ever heard of the man Methuselah? Ever heard the word man? He was the oldest man that ever lived. Let me show you something. He lived for 969 years. He was the great grandfather of Noah. Noah, uh, uh, Noah, Noah's father, um, Methuselah's father was a man named Enoch. The name of Methuselah, the oldest man that ever lived, before God condemned the first generation, the first, that first generation, he, he, he put a man named Methuselah. Hold on, partner. Let me just finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. He, he calls a man named Methuselah, the, long, the, the man that lived the longest on the earth. Listen, let me show you how God is. The name of Methuselah, according to the Hebrew scripture, it means when he is dead, it will be sent. Hmm. I christen a lot of people. I christen a lot of children. I christen a Samuel. I christen a Rebecca. I, I, I christen all kinds, but I never christen a Methuselah. When he is dead, it will be sent. And if I had time, I would show you from the scripture that from the day Methuselah died, the flood came. That happened just as it was predicted. Ladies and gentlemen, this world that we're living in, it is going to come to an end. Everything that has a beginning must have an simple. And I am now coming to an end. What are you going to do at the day of your death? Where, what, 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 is going to be, what is going to be with you when you die? Where are you going to be when you die? When, when, what world or what state will you be in when you die? David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I would fear no evil what? For thou art with me. A lot of people quote that Bible, but they didn't, they didn't quote the first part of the Bible where that says, the Lord is my shepherd. David had a shepherd to take him through the valley of the shadow of death. Do you have a shepherd to take you through the valley of the shadow of death? This world is going to come to an end. But Peter talked about another world. He said, there is a world, he said, there's a world where there is righteousness. And the committal, I will tell you a little more about that. But I want to close at this time because 10 past one. We started a minute, some minutes late, and I want to respect the time. They say we have one hour. I can leave this thought with you today. As you go to the cemetery in a, in a few while to deposit into the ground the body of Sean Darrymple, 
I'm going to ask you, you will come and listen to this message and go back and do the same thing? Are you going to come here when you start to think, I'm going to dead one of these days, boy. I'm going to be in a box one of these days. When you really begin to think that it caused you to think different, Let's all stand at this time. I have done preach. I think I, you got the message. I want to ask you, those of you that are looking at me on live screen, and those of you that are here. Where would you be when you die? Are you prepared for death? It is going to happen to you. It's going to happen to me. We cannot escape it. Where are you going to be? With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I want to pray. Father, I pray over these people, these intelligent people who have gathered at the home-going service of Sean Darren Perth. His friends, his son, his daughter, his family, Kumi. Well wishers. Lord, and as I preach your word today with the honesty of and as clear as I could, praying that your Holy Spirit would touch some minds today. That they too would be able to answer the question: Am I prepared for death? Am I prepared for death? Am I prepared to die? Am I prepared? To meet Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, we have two appointments that we cannot put in our book. The day of our death and the day when we're going to stand before God. We don't know those days. But we can prepare ahead of time. With your heads bowed, I want to, I want to lead you into a prayer. If you could make it your prayer, I would be glad. Pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I do not know the day of my death. I don't know when I will die. Lord, I have not really considered it. So today, I ask you to, I ask you to make me your child. Forgive me of all of my sins, all of my nastiness, all of my wickedness, all of my deceits, all of my pretense, all of my judgmental attitude. Cleanse me from sin and today write my name in that book. So when I die, and that, and that book is open, my name will be written, name will be written in, the in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you for doing it today. Amen. 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 Father, I thank you for those who have repeated that prayer, and I'm asking you that you would do for them what you did for me years ago and make them your child. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. At this time, I want to pray for the family. It's all, I want the family to come together. Come, I want to pray for you guys. Roy and the rest, you know, come at this time. You can stand by the casket of your loved one. Just come around. Just come around. Just come around and just meet. Yeah. Good. Well, all they have masks, or they go get COVID, man. Again, let me just um, extend my sincere condolences towards the family. I lost my daddy some years ago, and then I lost my mommy the day after. So I know the sickening feeling that you all feel inside. 
I can testify of it firsthand. And I do, I do. I do, uh, you know, you know, send out my sincerest condolences. I'm from a big family, and you know, the family there where your family feud, you know, and nonsense has happened in family. You know, I tell people, let me stop that nonsense. You just live with one another, love one another. And even when you go to bury daddy, lover, whatever he is to you, just bury our differences. Bury our love each other. Just pull together. You see this time now? No time for fighting, no time for pull together. This one is talking to that one. That is nonsense. I don't care how educated you are. That is nonsense. All of you come from the same womb, same father, same mother, and like dog and cat. That is right. Now, my church is very small, you know why? I just tell people this thing. I don't like it. Okay? I just tell people the truth. I ain't looking for tithes. I'm looking to tell you Jesus is coming. It's going to be so small. But it's okay. Them they go to heaven. A lot of kobo down there. But I want to pray for you guys. And I extend that you all need to mend some fences. Mend some fences. Pull together. Stop the arguing of what is this and what that. I ain't making no sense. We brought nothing into the world and we're taking, we're taking nothing out. Let's love each other. Okay? Let's bow for prayer. Father and God, I thank you for this family, this family of John Darren. God, you know what is happening in this family. You know the, the, the difficulties, the cold shoulders, the slamming phones, the bad. That in the next few minutes, when we bury Sean, that they would bury all of their differences and leave his graveside. Not, not to go back as the same people, but people prepared to be different, to carry on the legacy of this man. I ask for your peace upon them. I ask for your blessing upon them. Just as you bless my family, bless this family. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to do the committal at this time so that when you reach the, the, the cemetery, I don't know what kind of weather. Sometimes it's sun down here and then it's rain up there. The book of Revelation says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And that's the new earth that Peter was talking about. For the first heaven and the earth, first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death. Hallelujah. No sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to John, Write, because these words are true. Man that is born of woman is few of days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. For all flesh is as grass, and all the flower of man is as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower therefore fadeth away. Naked came we out of our mother's womb, and naked shall we leave this world. The Lord give, and the Lord take. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's bow for final prayer. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, you are the creator of heaven and earth, and all that is therein. Give of life and immortality. We now commit the body of our dearly beloved Sean Darrenpo 
to the ground from whence it came, to its final resting place, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Let's sing the last song, please. Help me sing the last song, please. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and clear, when the safe of earth shall gather on the earth yonder shore, and the roll is called up at yonder, I'll be there. Sing it with me. When the roll is called up at yonder, when the roll is called up at yonder, when the roll is called up at yonder. Beyond the I'll be there on the bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. Oh, when his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies, when the road is called up beyond the I'll be there. Sing with me when the road is called up beyond the 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 I'll be there. So let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wonders, love and care. And when all the life is over, on our work on earth is done. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Help me sing when the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called, just one more time, when the roll, oh, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there, when the roll is called up beyond when the world is called up beyond when the world is called up yonder i'll be i'll be there i hope to see some of you there i hope my name is there every morning i check to see my name there it is there and i hope that you check it was my, my delight and privilege to do the homegoing. So when you reach the cemetery, you can have your private time. Again, thank you very much. And those of you that are watching, God bless you. Don't leave. We want to, we want to, um, uh, is anybody who be going to the cemetery? Everybody going to the cemetery? Everybody going to the cemetery? You all had a chance to see the body? I don't want to deprive any one of you that wouldn't be going. OK, so we'd have, all right, good. So I'll ask the attendant, yeah, no problem. It's your funeral, we just, it's, it's what you want. Yeah, go brave, go brave, man. This is your last time to see him. All right.
Jesus died for me Yes, He died 